Hello and welcome everybody as we get ready to get into the spooky spirit together. Craftsy is bringing you five days of sweet treats and spine tingling crafts that are perfect for a frightfully fun time. And each day this week, our instructors have been streaming live as they demonstrate new Halloween inspired projects. Today is our final day of the Halloween crafting series, but you can still catch the replay of all five of the events and watch at any time. Also, you want to make sure to download your free patterns by clicking the link in the description. And once you get to the patterns page, click the picture of the project you'd like to download. If you have any questions at all during today's demonstration, please leave your comments in the blue chat box below or in the chat on Facebook and YouTube. I'll have an eye on those comments during the event. And as usual, any questions that you have about the step-by-step -step instructions, I will get those in as they come. Other general questions, we usually have some time to get to at the end of the demonstration. So don't be afraid to drop those in, as well as maybe a hello. Let us know where you're watching from and maybe some of your own Halloween spooky season plans, some crafts you might be working on. Uh, we like to share those as well. And then finally, before I introduce today's instructor, very fun, great opportunity for all of you out there. We are giving away a free Craftsy Gold membership. All you need to do to enter for your chance to win is text Halloween to 52056 and you will be entered to win that free Craftsy Gold membership. We'll be contacting the winner after the series ends, so you want to make sure to enter by texting Halloween to 52056 by October 9th. That's how you'll enter to win that free Craftsy membership. It's going to be very exciting, lots of good stuff with that membership, so make sure to send that text. That is it from me. It is time to bring on today's instructor. We have her joining us from the studio. It's Brenda KB Anderson. Hello, Brenda. Thank you so much for being here. Love your style today. <laughs> <laughs> We're really getting into this spooky season with you. I would love for you to give us a little intro about yourself. And also, what are we making with you today? Okay. Hi, Leah. Hi, everybody else. I'm so glad to be here. So an intro to me, first of all, I love Halloween. I absolutely love Halloween. And actually, for about 20 years um, of my adult life, I worked in a costume shop. So I, <laughs> I very much like making things that are spooky and kind of fun and creature-like. Okay, so this project is just right up my alley and I'm super excited about it. Um, so that's what I did for a lot of my a lot of my adult life was sewing in a costume shop, developing patterns um, and designing things. So um, I also knit and I crochet, um, and I teach on the creative crochet corner, and I do some lives there too. So maybe some of you have seen me before. And uh, today <laughs> we are making a super fun project. These are called the Batty Treat Bags. All right, so they're just these little bats. See, they're on a little bit of. Uh, elastic so you can bounce them a little bit which is kind of fun they're little bats and the top opens up to reveal the candy inside right so if there's just a little velcro on the top and then you can stuff it full of candy and i'm just going to point out my kids two favorite things dum-dums these can fit inside here here let me show you but the sticks need to go up inside of the ears up in there so that's how those fit just in case you're curious what can fit in here you can probably hear those are anybody can guess it they're nerds oh, i was gonna <laughs> say it's gotta be my favorite nerd yep <laughs> there's nerds in this one um so they just fit a few candies you know like the perfect amount to give a kid and not feel guilty about it right <laughs> there's a limit because these are kind of oh. small these look amazing. Um, I am going to pretty much leave the floor open to you, Brenda. I will jump in if any questions come uh, as you're going through, uh, but I'll just be gathering some more general questions maybe for the end and we'll see how uh, fun it is to put these together. They look amazing. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. So we're going to start by talking about the materials. So you probably noticed I designed an all black project and so I thought about that after I did it and I thought oh I'm gonna teach an all black project with all black parts on it and nobody's gonna be able to see what I'm doing so today I'm going to be showing you how to make the purple version right still cute bats can be whatever color 
Um, so, you know, feel free to make some colorful bats too if you like. But I just wanted to let you know, even though in the pattern it says, you know, black felt, black sparkly, glitter felt, that type of thing, you can of course substitute with whatever you like. And the reason that I'm doing purple bat is so you can actually see what I'm doing. So, all right, so two materials. You will need, um, for about three bats, you can use one piece of fleece to cut out the body. So for example, it's, uh, by piece of fleece, I mean the nine by 12 pieces of fleece that you can get at the fabric store, big box stores have them. This is just acrylic, uh, did I say fleece? I mean felt, <laughs> sorry. Felt that you can get at um, big box stores. This is not, it does not need to be, you know, fancy pants wool felt. It can just be the, the synthetic kind. That's really easy to find. Um, so that'll get you three bat bodies. But if you wanted to make six bats, the other piece of felt that you're going to need is a stiffened felt. So this, sometimes when you go to the store, it'll actually say stiffened felt on the tag on this. Um, this one doesn't even say stiffened felt. Yep. Sometimes they don't say they're stiffened, but you're just going to have to go to the store and feel it. Uh, you know, you can see the difference between this felt and this felt. So this is going to make really good wings, nice flappy wings. You want to find a stiffer, a stiffer felt. And for the black ones that I had made, I actually used a glitter stiffened felt. Okay, so it's kind of sparkly and that's a little bit of a fun contrast to the body that wasn't glitter. But, you know, it's all up to you. Be creative. Don't be limited by what I'm showing you. You just do what you want to do. Um, so you're going to need one piece of stiffened felt will get you six bats. So, or actually 12 wings, if that makes sense, two wings per bat. So if you wanted to just buy one of these, you could buy two of these and you'd have six bats right there. So the way that I grouped the supplies or the way that I explained the supplies, it's for making six bats at a time because I was assuming that people would not be able to stop after one. All right, so you need two colors of felt, one for the body, one for the wings, plus one scrap of felt that's just white, and that'll be for the teeth. You just, you don't even need that much. I mean, take a look at their teeth. They're pretty little. So you can just use a very small scrap of fleece in white, unless your bat doesn't brush its teeth, and then maybe yellow. Um, let's see, and then you'll need a couple yards of cord elastic. It's only 12 inches per bat that you actually need. So I have used both the this, like thin round cord, cord elastic, but there's also this oval cord elastic, and I find this is easier for my sewing machine to stitch through, which is funny because it's a lot bigger, but I catch it when I go through. Um, but I'll show you a trick when we get to the assembly how to use this thin cord elastic um, and how to not worry about it slipping through your stitches. So we'll get to that later. So, but you need 12 inches per bat, so two yards per set of six bats. And then you're going to need some safety eyes. That's what I used because it was so quick and just super cute. I love using safety eyes and things because you just pop them in and put the washer on the back. And if you've never used them before, that's totally fine. They're really simple and I'll be showing you how to do that. I put a link in the, in the um, supplies section for these, the ones that I ordered. But there are lots of places you can get safety eyes. I mean, you can even get them at big box stores now. Um, back when they weren't readily available everywhere, I started ordering from this company. It was called glasseyesonline.com. And they are amazing. They have all these different colors of, OK, and it, it is called glass eyes, but these are not glass. They're plastic. So you can look for the safety eyes at that website. And there's just like a bazillion kinds of them. And the cool thing is, is they paint the backs of them. All these, they use glitter. They use iridescent stuff. They use all kinds of different things. Um, uh, and so they're all ready to go for you if you want to buy them there. But these, I put a link. I just bought these from Amazon. They were very inexpensive. It came in a giant bag of assorted safety eyes like this. And you can use, um, well, you have to slide the little glittery here. I'm trying to pull it off so you guys can see this. There's a tiny glittery little circle donut. Like, I think it's a fabric, actually. It feels kind of papery, but I'm pretty sure it's some kind of very stiff, something in between fabric and paper. But you slide the glittery side towards the eye like that, and then you can see the glitter coming through. 
So you actually have to kind of assemble these just a little bit if you buy them from the website that, that I link to in the pattern. So just a heads up on that, because I'd never seen safety eyes this way before. That was a surprise to me. Um, okay, so safety eyes, cord elastic, three different kinds of felt, white, the body, the wing, and you will just need, a, oh, and then Velcro. Let's talk about the Velcro for a second. So I ordered just a uh, two inch wide black Velcro. It came with the male and the female side or the hook and the loop. So the hook is the scratchy side. You can hear that. And the loop is the sort of softer, fuzzy, fluffy side. Um, also known as female, hook known as male. So I had ordered just two inches wide because it'll make the project a little easier. But if you can't find two inches wide, I will show you later when we get to that section, you can just overlap two pieces and sew them together. That's completely fine. If you already have some one inch uh, uh, Velcro at home, that's completely fine. So um, you'll just need little bits of that. Your Velcro pieces are only this big, really. So there's one and then there's another one. Um, so you just need enough for, you know, however many bats you're doing. You can measure that out. So, all right, so let's prep our pieces. First, you're going to, oh, and also I need to mention, you can download your, your free pattern, the Batty Treat Bags pattern. So it, it is a description of how you put it all together with numbered steps, and also the pattern is also included in here too, which is what this is. So you'll print your pattern out and just make sure that you're printing it out at 100%. And then you're just going to cut out all your pieces. And you can cut right on that outside line. The dash line is just showing you either where things are placed or where the stitching line is. So we'll just be cutting our pieces out. <clears throat> and then I'll show you how I like to lay them out to make it quick. And I'm just using my regular craft scissors, you know, because we're cutting paper. And they work just fine for cutting through the felt, too. But later on, when you are doing, when you're poking holes for the eyes or cutting the little, a little tiny slit in the face for uh, the, where the teeth slide through, you're gonna wanna make sure you've got the sharpest scissors that are in your house right now <laughs> because it'll just make it so much easier. You can, no dull scissors on that part because it'll just be very frustrating. All right, so now I'm cutting out this little football shape. This is the, a piece of Velcro, this is for the female side, or the, the loop side of the Velcro. And the, the teeth, that's just this, this might look a, like a very strange pattern for those super itty bitty tiny teeth, and you might be thinking, Brenda, what happened to you? Did you go a little crazy when you made that pattern piece? That makes no sense. But you'll see later, this is just a, like it's basically a guide. You, can, you don't even need this pattern piece. You could just cut out a three quarter inch strip of white felt. You don't need to use this pattern piece. But I, I always like to have a guide or a pattern piece when I'm cutting out all my stuff so I don't actually forget to cut a thing out. Because <laughs> I will. All right, and these are probably pretty obvious, the wings. Just give those a little trim. And I did put the stitching lines on this pattern piece, but you don't actually have to mark that on your piece. I mean, I guess I, you know that's up to you if you feel like you want them in exactly, exactly the same space, but this is something you can eyeball. It might look kind of surprising to you that you can eyeball while you're stitching that, but it's not, it's not as tricky as it looks. All right. Get those away. All right, so we've got all of our pieces cut out. Well, all of our pattern pieces cut out, shall I say. And now we're gonna cut out some of the pieces of the fabric. Oops. So when I, I'm gonna just trim off my lines because this will fit a little better if I trim it off. You don't have to, but I'll show you in a second. When I designed this, I wanted to make it easy for people to cut these things out and not have to take a million years. So what I like to do is I'll fold my piece of fleece in half and then I'm gonna use this to mark out my pieces. And you can use, uh, you could use a fabric marker or if you're using black, 
My favorite thing to mark black fabrics is a silver Sharpie. So I would definitely recommend the silver Sharpie if you're tracing on the black, because you will be able to see it. And I know there's other things that are made for that, but they just don't seem to work as well as a silver Sharpie <laughs> to me. Anyway, so you're just gonna trace around your pieces. You might have noticed I lined up this side of my pattern piece with the edge, and then this side with the other edge. And the sort of U shape is along the folded edge of the felt. And so there's a reason for that, because it makes it really easy to cut and you'll see. So we're just tracing our pieces and see it. that'll fit right there. And actually I, I traced it a little bit sloppily, but we'll make it fit. It's just a little bit wider, but that won't really matter. Oop. There, and you, so you can see it's almost like big teeth here or something. Um, you can just, that just makes it easier to cut. You don't have to cut here or here. So we're going to make it a little bit quicker. So if you aren't, if you haven't cut a bunch of stuff in your life, <laughs> and you're a little newer to sewing, I would recommend just throwing a couple of pins in here to keep this folded so you don't get frustrated later with uneven edges. But when I was making these, I found I could just put my hand on the table and cut around and it was fine. This does not have to, this is not a super precision kind of project. It really, it's not gonna show if you're not cutting exactly on the line, that's okay. They're still gonna be adorable. So if you, if you are making a whole bunch of these and you wanted to use a rotary cutter to cut them out, I would recommend before you cut all this stuff, you could just cut a straight line here, straight line there, and then you can cut the sides like this to make it a little bit easier for you. All right, so see, we just cut out three bat bodies just like that. Then we're gonna cut out the wings and like I was saying before, you can do, you can fit six wings onto each one of these nine by 12 sheets. So one here and one there, you know, it doesn't matter which way, whichever way you want to flip them. Actually, I would say because maybe not all nine by 12s are actually for real nine by 12. Um, oh, I'm going to try out my silver Sharpie in this, see if this is dark enough for it to show up so you can marvel in the awesomeness of the silver, silver Sharpie. Let's see. Okay, so you're going to trace your wings. Here we go. I would put the points toward each other, the long skinny points toward each other. Maybe you can't see that on camera as well as I can, but I can see my line. So you can imagine if this was a darker, like a black, how you'd, you'd be able to see it even better. So if you put the, the points toward each other, then if for some reason, it, if your piece was a little bit more narrow, you could cut it out this way, unless you are using the glitter felt, which is what, what I said to use in the pattern, then you're gonna, have, you're gonna have to make sure you flip your pattern, you're gonna cut out one, two, three, four, five, six, and then flip your pattern piece and cut out one, two, three, four, five, six, if you have a right side and a wrong side. Because this particular felt that I'm using, I'm worried that I keep calling it fleece. Whenever I say fleece in this video, I actually mean felt, okay? So just, <laughs> there's your translation. I don't know why I keep saying that. But um, because I don't have a right side or a wrong side to my piece of felt, I can just trace them all with the right side of the pattern up and it does not matter. Okay, so I'm not gonna trace all of them, but you should be able to fit six here, six there and if you were making a gajillion of these you could stack another piece underneath it and then cut them out together but i'm not going to do that i'm just going to cut mine out here brenda it does look like a lot of people out there are considering making these and perhaps making more than six so these <laughs> little tips for uh, mass producing the cutting i'm sure are very helpful yeah i mean that's something at my job in the costume shop, we always had to think about how we were gonna mass produce things. So that's something that's in my brain, you know, when, I, when I'm making things. I'm, well, not everything. If I'm making my kids something, I'm not like, how am I gonna mass produce this? But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
for little things like this, or I know there's a lot of crafters out there who like to make things to sell, and it really makes a difference if you stop and you think about how to actually cut things out or how to mark things in a way that makes things a little bit quicker. Because if you're making a lot, it really adds up. Yeah, one of our viewers, Alexandria, uh, has mentioned that these would be cute to hand out to trick-or-treaters. So I'm, a, I'm assuming you would need to have quite a few of these on hand if that were the case. Yeah, especially if you lived at my house because we get about 200 kids. Oh, wow. So I, I will not be handing these out to every trick-or-treater at my house, but um, some of the kids that I already know that would come, I would give them, you know, like keep a little special stash. A little secret stash. Yeah, <laughs> secret bat stash. All right, so I've cut out my wings, and you know I forgot to talk about marking the face of these. Let's not, let's not forget that. Oh, here's my pattern piece. Let's talk about that for a second. Now, if you happen to have a sewing awl, then you can use that to poke these holes. You know, just psh, psh, poke right through. But I'm going to pretend I don't have that because not everybody has that. I'm going to use my sharper scissors, and I'm going to cut a little hole for each of these little marked eyeballs because that's going to make it a little template for us to mark them. So I'm just cutting the tiniest triangle you can imagine <laughs> out of that eye so that I can mark the center of it, okay? So I'm going to do that on both sides just so I don't confuse myself. Snip and snip. And then the same thing for the mouth. I'm going to fold this in half. And I am actually going to, instead of just cutting a little slit where the mouth is, I am going to actually cut along this line and then cut along the other side of my line. And then I'm going to fold this little bit. Where are you, a little bit? Here we go. See how I made a little notch there? You just want that to be big enough that you can get your pen in there, get your Sharpie in there. Otherwise, it's going to be super annoying to mark. OK, so that might have seemed like that took a while, but it'll be worth it, I promise. So then when you mark the faces, you're just going to lay that on top and get out your marking tool, whether it's a fabric marker or Sharpie, whatever you have, and do a little dot there. Just make sure you're marking this. If you have a right side to your fleece, maybe you're making the whole body or the head slash body, whatever you want to call this, if you're making that in a glitter felt or something like that, there's, then there will be a right side to it. So you just want to make sure you're marking this on the wrong side, on the side that will be on the inside. Or if you have lines here already, you're going to want to mark them on the same line. I mean, actually, that doesn't matter because that will be stuck in the seam allowance. But just make sure you're marking the side that you don't care about, right? So you're just going to go through, mark all those faces. All right. That's what we should have done before we moved on to the wings, but I forgot. All right, so we have head body, we have wings. Now we can cut out our little teeth, and we're just going to cut out. And I'm wondering if you're thinking, oh, is Brenda going to cut all these super tiny teeth, and then we're not going to be able to see all these super tiny teeth because she's on a white table and they're super tiny. But actually, I am not going to cut out every little set of teeth. I'm just cutting a strip. That's all I'm doing, just this. And actually, this one I might want to pin because it's a little skinny and slip. Actually, <laughs> we can mark it. Yeah, that's what we should do. You should mark it first before you cut it. I was getting a little ahead of myself, getting kind of excited. All right. <laughs> I'm not so very good at marking things unless I absolutely have to. Too. So I was just launching into the cutting part, which is how I made a lot of these, um, you know, in the privacy of my own home where nobody was watching. Okay, so here we have a, a little strip that's going to be good for at least six teeth, six sets of teeth, I should say. And then we're going to cut out, and you know, if you're making a ton of these, just use your ruler and just mark off, you know, use a rotary cutter, whatever you have, and just cut a long, very long strip of three-quarter inch wide strip. Doesn't matter how long it is, just make it long. And then if you run out, you can cut another one later. All right. And then, oh, Velcro, leave that bat alone. Okay, so now we're going to mark our Velcro. And 
flip it over so you can actually mark it with your Sharpie on the back side because marking the hook or loop side is kind of silly. It's very hard on your marker and you can't see it very well and it kind of looks messy. Silver Sharpie, you guys. Okay. So I should mention the large football shape is the, the oh, whoops, I cut it out backwards, you guys. Okay, this needs to be cut out of the female Velcro. But I'm going to correct this mistake in a minute and it'll be all fine. All right, so you're gonna put that on your, the loop side, the fuzzy one. And I should have mentioned this before, but definitely do not use sticky back Velcro here. I know that that's really common for two inch wide black Velcro, so don't be tricked and don't, don't buy the adhesive kind of Velcro because that will gum up your machine and it'll be sad. All right, so here's the thing I traced incorrectly, but that's okay because I just did, I've just almost made two pieces of this. This is just half of that anyway. So I'm just gonna lay this back on here and trace the edge and now I've got two pieces. You only need one though for one bag. All right. Now we're going to cut out our Velcro. Just cut on the line or cut off the line. You'll cut the line off or cut right down the middle of it. It's fine. I mean, like I said before, it doesn't have to be super precision for this project. Okay, that's for a future bat. And here is our loop Velcro. We're just cutting, cutting right off, right, right along that uh, traced edge. All right. Okay, I think we have all of our pieces now. We've got two pieces of Velcro. Yep, the three different kinds of fleece cut out. We're good to go. All right, so the first thing that you want to do is you're going to stitch the, you're going to make the stitching lines in each bat wing. So this is something that I just, kind of eyeball and freehand, it's really not, it's really not that tricky. If you are thinking about making a gajillion of these bats, maybe think about whether you really want to do the stitching. They'd still be cute without the stitching. I feel like that just adds a little extra fun to this project, but it's definitely something you could leave out because it is a little bit more time consuming. Um, but you'll see, it's really not that time consuming. I'm just thinking about mass production here. So I'm just using a straight stitch and you're gonna want a contrasting thread. I just use regular uh, uh, multi-purpose thread, all-purpose thread. I didn't use an embroidery thread or anything like that because I just wanted to use stuff that I figured people would just have at home. And I'm just gonna be stitching close to that cut edge. You can see on my little template, you can, you know, if you're doing this for the first time, maybe set the template near you so you can look at where those lines are. Oh, actually, this is the reverse. So <laughs> I'm, I have this flipped around backwards, but it doesn't actually matter. I want to show you how to do it both ways, because if you have um, a sparkly fabric, you might want to sew this with the, the, the sparkle up both times. And you have a right and a left wing. So, all right, when you get to the end, you just place your needle in, turn it around, and then you're just gonna be aiming to go from that point, you know, about a quarter of an inch or so away, right there. If you just think about this divided into thirds, so here's a third and a third and a third. And even my lines here, they're not perfect. They're not, they're not perfect, but they look super cute. So it doesn't matter. I don't want anyone to be hard on themselves about where, how they embroidered these wings, okay? <laughs> All right, and then you turn it around and you just keep going back and you kind of go forward a little and then you turn and go to the point. Just look at the place where you want your uh, foot to end up and then it'll get there. Okay, so we're just coming back. All 
great. Just trimming off my threads. And I mean, was this absolutely perfect? Was it exactly like that? Nope. But it still looks perfect and it looks just fine. I mean, it doesn't actually look perfect, but it looks perfect to me. It's going to be very cute. So you're going to do that for both wings. And if you had to flip yours, if you want to sew with your glitter up so that it doesn't get down in your feed dogs or whatever, then you just remember to do a reverse of the other, you know, a reverse of the wing. See, now I'm going towards the longer point. Make sure when you set it in your machine, one time you're going towards the longer point, and the other time, if you flip it, you're going towards the shorter point. Brenda, while you're doing these stitches, uh, we have a couple questions that have come in. Um, so our user McKinsey Curl, McKinky Curl, sorry, <laughs> asks, how would you customize these with names on them if you wanted to add? Uh, what step would you recommend doing that? Do you have thoughts on how you could customize these with names? Well, if you happen to have a kind of sewing machine that you can embroider you know, letters with, like little le small letters. That would be an easy way to do it if you program that in, but maybe time consuming. Um, I guess it depends on what time consuming means when you're making these super tiny little projects. You could try that or, I mean, of course you could hand embroider them or you could use puffy paint, but <laughs> okay, let me show you my sample. <laughs> I was gonna bring this out later. I used the puffy paint because I thought, oh, maybe not everyone wants to pay, you know, like $35, $35. Nobody wants to pay $35 for a pair of safety eyes. 35 cents for a pair of safety eyes for each one of these if you're making a whole bunch of them. So I thought, well, maybe there's some other options. And so I tried doing a little face with puffy paint and it shows up and it's still pretty cute, but it just doesn't look as polished as I wanted it to. So I just want to show you this in case you're thinking about doing their name and paint. I think it would be cute and you could put it like right down here on their belly or you know you could put it right on the, their back would be cute. I think that would be really cute to put it on their back. Um, but you know with the felt it's just it's got that kind of fuzzy texture so I don't know. I just I don't know if it like if that will bother you that it looks a little, the paint looks a little bit, not super polished, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> All <laughs> right. And a, oh, go ahead. A follow up, a little bit more similar, um, just on personalization, if people are doing these, if anybody wants to turn these into jack-o'-lanterns, use a different shape, is there, is that an easy kind of switch from the pattern you've provided and the steps you've provided to just change the shape? Not really, because of the way that it Velcros together. Mm -hmm. That's the way that it Velcros together, the way that we're going to sew this, and you'll see this in a little bit, it creates this sort of dip and the ears. It makes that shape. So, ah. I mean, you could just do something simple, like have two pieces of orange felt and have a very kind of a flatter version of these and, and have put a little bit of Velcro along one of the sides or something like that and just, and then maybe cut out a little green stem and a little green leaf and sew it in the, you know, catch it in the seam before you turn it right side out. I mean, you could do something like that, but it, you don't, it, it's not really a derived from this pattern, if that makes sense. Right. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just an idea inspired by it maybe. All right. All right. So now we're back to working on the face here. So we've already, we've marked this and we are going to poke some holes in to put our safety eyes and work on our teeth. So I recommend you do the teeth first. Do not do the safety eyes at this step because it, once you put the safety eyes, they stick out and they're kind of in the way a little bit. So, but we're going to cut out all the pieces or all the, all the holes right now. So I'm folding my piece in half and we're just going to use the sharpest scissors we have and cut this little slit. Now you do not need you do not need to cut a hole like like how we did on our pattern piece. It just needs to be a slit like that. It can it can still meet up. You don't have to slice all the marking off. And then you're going to just poke little holes in for the eyes. And if you have a sewing awl, you can do it with an awl, but I'm just going to do it with my scissors. Just a little tiny snip there just big enough that you can get the post of the safety eye through. Just a tiny snip. Okay. 
Okay, so now we have a little hole there, a little hole there, a little slice there, and we can do the teeth. Next, so to make the teeth, this is the right side of our fabric because it doesn't have any markings on it. To make the teeth, you're just gonna slide that little rectangle through till it kind of pokes out, just like that. <clears throat> and then you're going to do a straight stitch just above it, right there. So you're gonna be stitching really close, like an eighth of an inch away if you can. And do a little back tack, just follow that curve around. If you're very new to sewing, and you don't want to make that little curve, that's fine. You can just cut out a straight line for the mouth and that'll be super cute too. Some of these little bats have straight mouths and some, like this one, you can see the curve smiling a little bit more than the serious bat with the straight line. So, you know, that's, that's kind of actually a fun way to personalize these two is you can change the, the expression just a little bit. And you, of course you can change the eye color. There's lots of different kinds of eyes. All right, just trimming my ends. So now we have this tooth sticking through to the outside, and then there's this big long thing. So we're just gonna fold that down, okay, towards like the chin or the bottom of the bat. And we're going to do a stitch, a line of stitches just right along that bottom edge. So you're gonna fold its teeth up, ow! And then you're gonna stitch right along that bottom smile curve there, right there, really close. Again, once again, like an eighth of an inch away if you can, or you know, as close as you can comfortably stitch across that little slit that we cut. All right, so. Then at that point, we can just snip this off. It's no longer needed. You can just cut it off. I just left you know, a little less than a quarter of an inch there. Um, you know, whatever seems, seems necessary. And then at this point, you get to do a little dentistry. <laughs> Let's hope this isn't real dentistry. So you're gonna actually be making teeth. So I'm just cutting a little slit here and cutting a little, you're basically just cutting off the tiniest triangle on both sides. And then you're going to do the same thing on the other side for each tooth snip. And these do not have to be exactly perfect. They really don't. There's, all my teeth look a little different from each other, and they all look super cute. It gives them a little personality if they're not all identical. All right, so, and then you're going to cut across here. And you can cut almost all the way down if you want. I like to leave just a little ridge of white showing like that. All right, so there's the front, and then at this point, we can put the eyes in. So here's my safety eyes, and I recommended using these two different colors, um, two different sizes, rather. One is 12 millimeters, and the other one is 14 millimeters, I believe. Um, I generally like the larger eyes. So we have lots of different colors in here. I'm gonna do orange ones on this guy. But those were the two sizes I thought looked the best with the design. But of course, you could have giant eyes if you wanted to. So to put a safety eye on, you're just going to poke it through from the right side like that. And then you just put the backing on and the flatter side of the backing. Like if I set it on here, I'll set it on something that you can. This can wobble back and forth because it kind of sticks up here. It's like a little tiny hat. All right, so the top of the hat, the crown of the hat, that should be up when you pop it onto your uh, post. You just push it and you can hear it click. And you push it all the way up as far as you can, and then it's fastened. And I should mention, these are called safety eyes, but I also wanna mention they're actually, their name is a little bit misleading because you don't wanna give these to a kid under three because it is possible they could rip the safety eye through the fabric and choke on it. So I'm just gonna point that out. So please don't give these to unsupervised, very young children. <laughs> All right, I think it's on there good enough. All right, so we've got two little eyeballs and our cute little teeth looking so adorable. The next step is to put the wings on. So you're gonna sew them onto the face and when you cut this 
pattern piece out, remember how there, was, where there were the straight lines here and then a curve? The reason that I never bothered to round that off in the pattern, well, two reasons. One's because it's easier to cut out. And the other reason was because it made it easier to place the wings. You don't have to cut a notch or mark, mark a notch or anything. You just put the wing so that the bottom corner of the wing is matching up with that corner where you went from straight to curved. So if you're a pinner, this would be, be a good time to pin, but you just can put one pin in here. Um, but I find that this fleece is very sticky and it, it, I don't need to pin these. They're such tiny little pieces. I can just hold them and zip them through the machine so it makes it a little quicker. One thing you want to watch out for is that these eyes, now that we put them on here, they're kind of sticking up and they're a little bit annoying. So just make sure you put the post to the side and don't try to press down on this part. Just only press down on the part that's next to your eye. But you have plenty of room. Your, your foot should um, fit next to it, so it should be just fine. So we're just stitching a quarter of an inch away from the edge. Just do a little back tack there. Actually, you don't even really need to do that because we're going to be stitching through it again later. And then we are going to put the other wing on. And I should mention, if, if these wings are done with something that has a right side or a wrong side. If this was glittery, you're going to want the glitter side to be touching the face of the bat when you sew this on. Okay, so when you open it up, it's to the front. All right, so we're going to place that other one on there, stitch it. Oh, you know, I just realized I forgot to put the Velcro on. In my directions, I have you put that on before you do the eyes and all that stuff because it just seemed a little bit less cumbersome because you don't have the eyes on. But if you forget, like I did, you can certainly do it now. Um, yeah, but I would recommend, especially if you're mass producing these, to put all the Velcro pieces onto your, uh, your felt first. All right, so, okay. I'm going to back up and show you without one with the eyes just because that will make it a little bit more clear. I'm going to cut another piece of this female Velcro because then, then it'll look like if you were doing this and it won't be so confusing because I want while you guys. You, oh, sorry. <laughs> while you press that, uh, we did have a question about the eyes. Debbie was wondering if buttons for eyes would also look okay. Yeah, you can definitely do that. One little trick that I like to do with buttons is I will buy white buttons that are just a little bit bigger than black buttons and then I will sew them together in a stack so that you get a little bit more dimension. It's kind of fun, especially on something that's black like this. If you buy a pupil, I mean the black, a black button, it's not going to show up very well. Um, yeah. And then if you want a white button, sometimes, I don't know, white buttons used for eyes just kind of weird me out because it looks like someone's eyes are rolling back into their head. Maybe that's in the spirit <laughs> of Halloween though. So. And with a little black X or red X in the middle, that could be cool. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks for asking that question. <laughs> yeah, the reason I chose the safety eyes was because I just w was trying to think of what would be cute and very easy and very quick. Okay, so rewinding all the way back to the beginning before we started sewing, I wanted you to put these Velcro pieces on first. So whichever piece has the face drawn on it, let's say this one had the face drawn on it right here. Here's the face. And you drew it on so carefully with the template I gave you. Um, that Whatever piece has the face on, you are going to put the, the Velcro, the male Velcro. Let me just make sure hmm, that I'm telling you the same way I told you here. Okay. The loop side goes on the back. Yes. Okay. So you're going to put this, the, the loop side. Wait, hold on. Wrong side of the back. Okay. The female side goes on the wrong side of the back. Okay. That's what I thought. Okay. So you're going to put the loop side on the front, on the wrong side of the front. So you should be able to see the face you traced, and you're going to lay this side onto the front. Actually, to be totally honest, it doesn't really matter which piece goes where. Um, 
but this was just less confusing to me before. <laughs> All right, so when you're stitching your Velcro on, you're gonna wanna switch to a zigzag. You just need whatever width of zigzag you can comfortably go on and off and on and off. You're probably gonna make a, a fairly large zigzag. I mean, not super large, somewhere between an eighth of an inch, maybe just slightly bigger, between an eighth and uh, a quarter of an inch, so like 3 sixteenths of an inch or so. You don't have to specifically look for that size, but just sometimes people ask about that. So I'll show you what it looks like in just a minute. But you're going to go on and off and on and off, We're, you know, stitching your Velcro. And normally I like to um, use a fair, like a larger needle for this, for stitching through Velcro. I would use something like a 14 or a 16, especially if you're doing a lot of these. And definitely pay attention if it starts skipping, you're going to need to change your needle because that's... This will make your needle dull if you do a lot of sewing of the Velcro. All right, so we've stitched the scratchy side just above the face there so we can see that. So this is what we see on the right side. We just see that little stitching line. And then we're going to stitch this football shape female side to, to our back. And if there's a right side to your, did I say fleece again? I did, didn't I? <laughs> you stitch your Velcro to the wrong side of your felt. If there's a right side and a wrong side, this is the side that should be the right side, and then you slide this underneath, okay, so that the fuzzy side of your Velcro is actually touching the wrong side. So I, I know this is hard to see because it's black, but this is the fuzzy side of my Velcro. I'm going to lay it down. The fuzzy side is getting trapped in here in between, you know, the Velcro backing and your felt. I said it. All right, and then you can go ahead and pin this or clip this in place, and you're going to stitch the along the top edge of your felt with the same zigzag right down the middle of your football. Okay, and then back tack. And then we are going to stitch the bottom edge of our Velcro, but we can't see that because it's underneath our felt. So we're gonna flip this piece over so we can stitch this Velcro. Okay, so right now I'm looking, this is the back side of the Velcro, the non-fuzzy side of the Velcro, if that, if that makes sense. The non-fuzzy side of the female loop side, all right. So you just do a little zigzag close to the edge or on and off and on and off to catch that. All right, so this is what you should have done to begin with at the very beginning of this. And then we fast forward through all the stuff we already learned about, making the face, putting the wings on, getting ready to go. Then we have this piece all ready to go. So, oh, actually, <laughs> I still have to sew it on this because I put the eyes in that. So here's my other piece. We'll do that quickly. So good thing that I made that mistake earlier and I accidentally traced two of these. Because then <laughs> I made another mistake. <laughs> oh boy. All right, while Brenda gets uh, going with catching up on this second piece here, uh, just a quick reminder for me, we have a little more than 10 minutes left. Uh, so I am gathering some of the more general questions to get to if we have some time at the end. But if you have a question for Brenda, now is probably the time to get it in. Uh, also a reminder, if you didn't join us right at the top of the hour, uh, we are giving away a free Craftsy Gold membership. And all you need to do to enter for your chance to win is to text Halloween to 52056. We're going to be contacting a winner after this series ends, so you need to enter by October 9th. So that is a fun, exciting way to get a little bit more craftsy in your life. Uh, so you want to make sure and check that out. All of the links to the, um, to the pattern are in the description and also in the chat box, as well as that information about the text line that is in the chat box as well. So that's it for me. I'm going to send it back to Brenda. Still a little bit more than 10 minutes left to get through. All right, we don't have too much left, so we're doing pretty good. All right, so when we put the back onto the front, what we're gonna do is first we're going to fold the tips of the wings in, 
because we don't want those to get caught in our stitches. And you can put pins in here if you want. Once you do a bunch of these, you'll just get used to checking for those and you won't really need pins. But I'm gonna put one there just in case you were wondering what I meant by pinning it. Then you're going to place the back side down. You should be able to see the entire black football at this point. And you're going to just match up your edges. And if you want to pin that, you can. I'm just going to pin it at the bottom so I know that I'm about in the right spot. But you could pin it all the way around. Actually, I'm going to loosen this pin just a little bit because there, pull these a little further apart. The reason I did that was because I, I pinned them a little tight and they were kind of misshaping my the edges of my piece. All right, so now we're just gonna do a quarter of an inch seam all the way around here. And while we do that, we're going to add our 12 inch piece of elastic. Or if you, if you uh, have ribbon or yarn or something else at home, you could certainly use that. You just wanna trap it in the seam. And since I use this skinny little extra boingy elastic, I will tie a knot about half an inch or so away from the edge, tie it really tight so it's not gonna just work itself loose. And that will help keep it from slipping out from in between your stitches if you don't actually catch it with your, with your needle. And this is another like a little word of warning too. Go slowly when you are stitching over these elastics, especially this kind of cord elastic. For some reason, the oval elastic, my machine always likes that a little better than this cord elastic. But if you hit it and you're going too fast, you might get like a little, you know, Bob and Art going on underneath <laughs> with like some crazy threads. All right, so we just, oh, let me back this up for a second. We're gonna place the elastic about a quarter of an inch or even just a little bit more down from the edge, sandwiching it between. This doesn't need to be super exact. You wanna make sure though that that knot is out of the way of your stitching. You're not gonna hit it. So it'd be better to err on the side of the knot being, you know, this, like even being able to see or not, that would be okay. Cause if it starts to pull, it'll come through a little bit and it'll stop where your knot is. You just don't wanna hit that knot while you're sewing. So I'm gonna put this back to a straight stitch and we're just gonna do one seam, go slowly over that elastic and you're gonna want a back tack right there. And you're gonna be catching everything. So you're catching the two edges of your wings, or you're catching, sorry, I should say one edge of the wing in each side. So it's a little sandwich of the front, the back, and the wing in between. And you can kind of just peek in there to make sure the tip is not sticking out because you don't want to catch the tip from one side of the wing across in the seam of the other side. I've done that many times. That's why I'm telling you to fold those tips in because you, yeah. <laughs> you can do that as you sew, but you might forget. Oops, I, for I actually did forget the elastic on the other side. So we're gonna, I'm just going to snip this here. Here, I'll pull it out. I'm just going to open this up a little bit here and put the elastic through. So you got to catch your elastic twice. So, so here's a good lesson for people who aren't pinners like me. Maybe on the first one or, you know, if you're feeling a little distracted by your awesome wig or something, then you should pin things so you don't forget to sew them together. All right. Okay, so we're just trimming off all of our ends here. And we're gonna flip it. So I just like to put my thumbs all the way down into the bottom and pinch it and pull it out, just like that. Gotta unpin this little guy, sorry. Let your wings unfurl, my little friend. All right, so this is what he looks like. And then in order to get that top shape, you're gonna, I mean, you don't actually even have to stuff it with candy. You might think that that's what helps it, but you can, you can stuff it with candy at this point. Then you're just going to tuck this in here. Okay, so I just tucked the, the female side down and then I'm matching the male side right on top of the female shape. So this shape, like you're just stacking one crescent 
directly on top of the other. You'll see when this is in front of you, it'll make a lot more sense. It might be kind of hard to see what I'm doing, but you're just gonna flip this down like this and close it like that. So you can see how the two edges of the felt kind of butt up next to each other. And you can pull up on those a little bit, pull up on the elastic, and that's what forms the ears, just like that. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we do have time for a few questions. Uh, so Brenda, I'm gonna get as many as I can to you. Uh, so first we're going back a little ways to uh, the personalization, and there was a suggestion to use a Cricut. Uh, do you think that would work onto the felt? Like, you know, something to apply to the felt? Um, oh, to cut out another felt piece to put onto it maybe or something or some kind cut of... Cut out uh, vinyl like a, or anything oh, like that on a Cricut and then so. add it? Yeah, that's a good suggestion. As long as you have a way to adhere it, like some kind of fabric glue or whatever you're gluing together, just check and make sure that that's, you know, or maybe you can cut out some sort of sticker that sticks on. I don't know very much about those kind of machines. I wish I did, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that's another thing that I would like someday. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, maybe they can, I'm assuming you can cut out stickers and stuff like that. So maybe there's something that would stick well enough to the felt. I don't know. All right. Well, maybe people can share some ideas as you try uh, out there doing these crafts yourself. Um, one of the other questions that we had to uh, carry on to your fleece versus felt that you were saying, Lisa is actually wondering <laughs> if you if could, you use, could fleece. use fleece instead of felt for the body. Well, this is so funny because maybe the reason I keep saying fleece is because when I first made the very first one of these, I did use fleece. And you can actually use fleece. The only, Really the only reason I switched it was because I wanted to have stiff wings. So, you know, you could do fleece for the body and then you could still use the stiff and felt for the wings. Or what I originally was thinking was you could, you know, you could inter, like it could be two pieces of fleece stuck together with interfacing or something like that to make the wings stiffer. That just added on too much time. And this, I don't know, but definitely they're like, there's no reason you can't use that. The, the, the good thing about fleece and felt or whatever you, this fleece felt um, is that part of the reason I chose it is because you don't have to worry about anything fraying. So you don't mm -hmm. have to deal with se weird seam treatments. And like when you're stitching the Velcro on the edge, you just have the cut edge right there and it looks great. And fleece is like that too. So you could definitely, this is very adaptable, but I would say just think about, how, you know, how you want the wings to look. If you want them to be stiff like this, you might actually, you could think about sewing something to them to make them stiffer, like zigzagging over, maybe even a cord elastic on fleece might make it stiff enough or something. You know, you just want to, that's the only kind of drawback to using the fleece on the wings, but fleece on the body, no problem. You could definitely do that. Mm -hmm. All right. And then I'm going to go, there were a couple questions that came in about the eyes. So in general, since this is an open project, even at the end, you can just open up the Velcro. Is there a reason why the eyes went on at the step you showed versus at any, really at any yeah. other point in the project? Yeah, you can definitely put them in at the end. That's how I did the first one. But I felt like it was it was just a little awkward to get my fingers in there to make sure. I was just thinking about if somebody had never used safety eyes before, it would be easier that they could see both sides of it. So I wanted to teach it that way, but you can for sure do these at the end. I can get my fingers in there because I put in lots of safety eyes before, or maybe you could just practice on another scrap just to, till you know what you're doing. It's not that hard. You're just putting the pieces together, but you, you can't exactly see what you're doing when it's already done. But yeah, I mean, if I was mass producing these, just me, myself, and not teaching it, that's how I would have done it. I would have just poked them in, felt around in there, and pushed it on the back. Yeah. All right, that's very helpful. I think that there are a lot of people that are curious about getting those eyes out of the way while sewing on the machine. Uh-huh, yep. Uh. It isn't that hard when you're sewing it on the machine. You just have to put your presser foot here and there. It's not that hard, but yeah. I mean, if you're a little worried about that, just do a little practice, or if you're confident with the safety eye thing, yeah, just put them in at the end. And like I said in the pattern, like go through, make one bat first, figure out just exactly how it's easiest for you. Cause there might be, on this bat, there's a, 
you know, you can actually put things together in slightly different ways, but I would recommend definitely doing the teeth before doing the eyes. Besides that, you can put things together in other ways if that's more helpful to you. So, you know, if you just go through it one time, figure out how you, you like to do it, and then you can do all the steps at the same time when you're mass producing them, like do, you know, if you like to do the safety eyes at the end, do you know do the body with the Velcro? So the you know so the wi so the stitching in the wings, put the wings in the body, and then you know at the end do all the safety eyes. But you know for everything, so that you you can really cut down on your time a lot if you're doing things in those steps all at the same time. You're just used to doing the things, and you make one mistake, you know, and then you won't make it on the other 20 that you're going to make because you already got it out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, perfect. We've got one final question. Uh, this is from Crin Marie, and she loves your witchy headband. Wants to know if you made it or purchased it, and if you did purchase it, do you remember where it came from? Oh, well, thank you. Actually, I was going to mention this because this is something that I designed. It's a crocheted headband. It's on this little uh, headband covered in crochet here, too, as well. Um, and I'm going to be teaching this on the 18th on the Creative Crochet Corner website. So it's a live, it's a free live event and it's got a free pattern uh, associated with it that you could just download too. So that's on October 18th at 10, 10 o'clock Central Time. Ah, oh, fantastic. Something to look forward to. We'll keep a little spooky spirit going. Uh, well, I am going to let you say a quick farewell, Brenda, and any final thoughts that you have. And then I'm going to send us off with a few reminders myself. But first, Brenda. Well, this was a super fun project. I feel kind of bad that I did things out of order, but hopefully people will be watching the whole video first <laughs> until before they make the bats. Um, but it was a really fun project and this, I just, I can't wait to see what you guys make. So please post pictures of your bats and uh, I, I, I just am excited to see them. Yes, indeed. And that's a great time for me to share the hashtag that we would love for you to use. We always want to see you share your projects with us. And if you make any of the projects, either today's or any of the projects from this week, please use the hashtag ShareCraftsy. We love to see the spin that all of you put on these projects as you take them into your own hands. So again, that hashtag is ShareCraftsy. And then here's my reminder about that free Craftsy Gold membership. You want to get your hands on that and you can enter for your chance to win by texting Halloween to 52056. Again, we'll contact a winner after the series ends, which is in about a minute now, uh, but you want to make sure to enter by October 9th. So you still have a little bit of time. Once again, you can go back and watch today's demonstration or any of the demos from the entire week. You can find all of that information in the link in the video description. And we have to say thank you so much for joining us. This Treats and Treasures mini series was so fun and we hope you've been inspired to make some crafts and treats all Halloween season. So although our live events are done, you can catch those replays like I mentioned of all five demonstrations and you can still download any of the free projects. So please do that if you haven't done so already. On behalf of Brenda and the entire Craftsy team, happy crafting and happy Halloween. <laughs>